Okay, so full disclosure, I did not play World of Warcraft back at launch. I only got into the game late Burning Crusade, and as you may imagine, the eight... Wait, ten? Uh, twelve? Twelve-year-old me was infatuated with the game. Over the years, it changed and evolved into something very different, which is right about when people started thinking they wanted classic servers, but they in fact didn't? Which, in turn, is how we wound up with six-hour-long queues on launch day and over 20 new servers added in the days following launch, as if to reiterate how much people didn't want to play the original game again. But that's all besides the point. This video is not about those changes. Nor is it about PR statements that didn't age well. This video is about a video game that was created with love and care, desire to bring people together and meticulous attention to detail, rooted somewhere very deep in the pen and paper role-playing adventures. I've played an unhealthy amount of MMOs over the years and none of them really do what Classic WoW does, and that is not to say that they're doing it wrong and there is no place on the market for them, it's to say that the genre of MMOs that Classic WoW represents is no longer around, and despite being told that we think we do but we don't, there seems to be a very well-defined niche that no one bothered to fill. Some of the things I'm going to mention are also still part of the retail or modern-day WoW, it just took a 15-year-old game to rediscover them. So please, don't take this video as a comparison or, god forbid, outright bashing. All that said, let's dive in. The game doesn't go out of its way to make you feel strong. The encounters with monsters feel very weighty, the game punishes you for biting off more than you can chew, and most of all, it makes every time you go out of town on a quest feel like an adventure. Most, if not all of the classes, heavily depend on auto-attacking in one form or another, so you don't always end up pushing buttons. Sometimes you just stare at the screen watching the damage numbers flow around. This is especially evident early in the game where your resource is very scarce. The mob encounter loop usually consists of you starting the fight, burning the said resource, then finishing the mob off using auto-attack, and subsequently using items or waiting to restore the said resource. And this puts weight behind your every action, because the combat is designed in a way where the enemies can dodge, parry, block and resist, and your character can... Not lending a hit feels bad, which makes every single encounter less predictable than you would otherwise think. A series of bad misses can put you in a very bad situation where you might need to find a way to heal or disengage, but in the same way a lucky crit can finish off a mob from half health, letting you go on your merry way to immediately engage another enemy. One of my friends described Classic's combat as being similar to a D&D &D encounter, and they're not wrong. Every attack has a chance to hit or miss, succeed or fail, crit or get resisted, based on the percentage stat unique to a character based on their race, class, level and gear. Some of the more powerful abilities, like stun, sprint or incapacitate, are on a cooldown that will only let you reuse them after 5-7 to seven minutes, like a short rest. And the more powerful ones, like combat resurrection and bloodlust, <coughs> are on a 30 plus minute cooldown, like a long rest. Different ranks of spells also work in a very familiar pen and papery way. You can either use a high level more efficient and more powerful spell and use more mana to cost it, or you can stick with lower level spells and conserve mana if you so choose. The lower level spells for some of the caster characters and healers don't just become redundant, they'll still get used in certain situations. Last but by no means least, there are spells in your character's arsenal that won't get used very often, like Eagle Eye, Farsight. I kill Rog, Sense Undead, etc. And in the same way, there are spells that have to always be used, like Arcane Intellect, Mark of the Wild, and such. But all of them make your class special, they add flavour. It's what you chose to play, and no other class in the game will have that same utility, making sure all the classes play differently, even if the base rotation loop will boil down to using only a handful of spells. Of course, the above is by no means unique to Classic WoW, so to understand why this is so immediately noticeable and incredibly apparent, I dug a bit deeper. As much as the game reminds me of a D&D &D adventure, it also is very mechanically similar to something like Dark Souls 2. Wait, 
this does this that mean that Classic WoW is the Dark Souls of MMOs? No. No, it doesn't. However, there are in fact more than a few parallels I'd like to draw between the two titles. Both games seem to, although understandably to different degrees, value similar things. I'll try not to go too deep on Dark Souls game design because that's a video in and of itself. That said, Dark Souls 2 likes making you feel small and powerless in this huge open world, and it achieves that through constantly reiterating how fatal the combat encounters are and how mistakes have consequences. It also, more so than other games in the series, makes a very big emphasis on level exploration and non-boss enemy combat, to the point where most of your time is spent clearing the levels, and boss encounters are just a gasp of fresh air before the inevitable tide of the struggle to make your way through the world sweeps you under. The items that you eventually find, or don't find, are there to provide meaningful upgrades to your combat experience. Even though some of them are just percentage stat increases or resistance bonuses, they do make a difference, and sometimes go as far as to change your playstyle completely, while of course making your journey through that dark, rejecting world a little easier. Believe it or not, I think Classic WoW does much of the same thing, and while thematically the low polygon, almost cartoony looking art style of WoW doesn't invite the same feeling of existential dread as Dark Souls does, the parallels are quite clear. Classic WoW relishes in the excruciatingly painstaking way it makes you fight enemies, and its level system has a huge role to play in this. Underleveling an enemy will make you constantly miss your target, introduce glancing blows, increase mob's aggro range, and make it so your character will be much more prone to critical damage, which makes it incredibly hard to make your way through a high level location. In turn, overleveling an enemy, well, I'm sure it's just confirmation bias, feels like it effectively increases the drop rate of the required quest items? Most likely because the encounters are much faster and downtime shorter. So the game basically actively guides you on your path through the world while still encouraging you to explore if that's what you're after. Just like a Dark Souls game, taking on more than one or two enemies at a time will be difficult. for most classes, in most cases, there's no speeding through the game without deliberate oversaturation with the same type of content, be it AoE farming or dungeon runs. You're mechanically forced to take things one at a time. The gameplay loop is centered around the slow, meticulous farming, which understandably some people find boring, and yet there's something so therapeutic and relaxing about it. Talking about it doesn't do it much justice, and all in all, it will most definitely come down to your level of patience and personal preference. I can only say that devs did some brilliant work on the activity that is going to occupy the vast majority of your playtime way back in 2004. The most important fact that I can't overstate enough about Classic WoW is that it's an RPG first and an MMO second, at least in the sense that we've come to understand the MMO genre in 2019. Classic WoW, or Vanilla WoW for that matter, is a love letter to the Warcraft universe where everything down to the smallest detail is crafted to immerse the player in the world, give a sense of belonging and purpose, even though the actual tasks you carry out as an in-game character are often very mundane. 
I'll be drawing on specific rather than general examples to make my point, but hopefully that helps you paint a picture of the game as a whole. All the hubs in the game are designed with the assumption that you're going to spend time in them. Walking into a new town feels like a start of a new adventure, rather than a pit stop where you get loaded with quests and speed off never to return again. Or, well, to return just once again to hand them in and then bugger off never to be seen again. Some towns will have some conveniences, but not others. You'll find a tailoring trainer and a butcher in Crossroads, and in the same way you'll find an engineering hub and a bank in Ratchet. Following the same trend, every town will have a vendor that will sell cooking recipes relevant to the zone it's located in, letting you use the ingredients you got during your travels for something that will assist your character in the future. And that's a detail that not a very large portion of your player base will even notice or care about, and yet it's there. Throughout your leveling experience, all these hubs and the characters in them get to play a certain role. Once you're done with the hub, it doesn't just delve into obscurity. The characters get brought up later down the line, and some quests will lead you back into that hub, or maybe halfway across the world to some long-lost relative of the character from that hub. The world of Warcraft feels connected. It's not broken up into zones with strict borders. You just make your way through the game very naturally, moving from one place to the other, and maybe back. And maybe back again. The game doesn't let you stay in one zone questing forever though, as in my experience, there never are enough quests in the hub to get you all the way over the threshold to move on to the next zone. You kind of nudge towards, if not forced, to explore and quest in different places around the world. Major towns are not only used to host auction houses and banks and profession trainers, instead, every few levels, you'll come into town and notice a quest being handed out by one of the faction leaders, and it will send you on an adventure to some dungeon. The beauty of this is that, to get the maximum value, you'll have to visit all the cities. And on the contrary, if you're only staying in your birth city, you're not missing out on too much since the NPCs there are still likely to direct you to that dungeon. Lastly, some of the higher level profession trainers are not even found in those major cities necessarily at all. You'll get to the thresholds of 115, 225 profession level, and I'll just say, oh, I've taught you everything I can, if you travel to Location X you'll find a person who's much more skilled than I am and they can teach you. Isn't that brilliant? And for someone who's been playing WoW for a long time, this is such a welcome home gift. Take this example. I finished leveling fishing to 150 and realized the fishers in Thunder Bluff can't teach me anymore. I didn't realize they would tell me where to go at the time, so I just put some thought into it and went on to guess that maybe the fishing trainer is going to be in Booty Bay, the largest pirate harbor in the world. So I take my stuff and I go on this goose chase, not even knowing for a fact that at the end of it I'll get what I want. So I fly to Ratchet, I take the ship to Booty Bay, I search every building and what do you know, I find Old Man Herming that sells a book, aptly named Expert Fishing, the Bass and You, that will unlock the next tier of the profession for me. And I found that exhilarating. All of the above really are just examples of how the game handles flavour and adds immersion. There's no practical need for all those quests to be in different cities, neither is there a practical need for you to go all the way half across the world on foot to learn fishing, and yet without those things, the game would lose its charm. And the list doesn't stop there. From class-defining ability quests, languages, weapon skills and proficiency, actual boat and air travel, and down to the inability to speak to NPCs while shapeshifted or cast while seated, these are just some of the things that make the game what it is. I honestly have to admit that not a ton of games today go this far to inconvenience the player to, in return, craft such an incredibly consistent world that tries its bloody hardest to feel real to you. And I think that's awesome. If you've been around the forums and the reddit threads, you might have noticed that people are feeling really good about the turn that the classics community took. People seem to be friendly, helpful, almost altruistically so, and less focused on blasting through the game and min-maxing and more focused on enjoying the game in the moment. Part of that, of course, is thanks to the game design being focused on the journey rather than the destination, but part of it is just people being decent for once, I suppose. Regardless of if this will change later on, or if this is just the type of person that this game draws, I'm not here to talk about that. Enough people have. Not having the convenience of a looking for group tool, and having people running around the world right there with you, has brought about groups forming on the spot to do a quest, and asking someone for help if you're struggling to kill an elite mob, which ends up feeling much more authentic. 
You get to adventure together with real people, have conversations, and generally have a good time rather than just being grouped up by some in-game system and then just making it through a dungeon, never saying a word, even if that's not necessarily the game's fault. The way server structure works in Classic also adds to the social aspect of the game. Right now, the servers are divided into what Blizzard calls layers. Layers are basically a server inside a server, if I'm not to spend too much time on the explanation, and the mechanic is there so that people don't end up having to constantly fight or respawn or, or a gathering node. Blizzard says that there are currently single digit amounts of them for each given server, and aims for them to completely go away by phase 2 of Classic. That being said about layers, you're still on the same server with the same group of people, so it's very possible for you to meet friends in the open world accidentally, which I can't say happens a lot in MMOs these days, and it feels nice. In any case, each layer has enough players around that the world feels alive. It's not just yourself who's struggling with a high-level quest or an enemy faction camping rogue, it's people all around you, buffing you, helping you with a tough fight, being assholes, or doing their own thing, what have you. The game feels massively multiplayer, which of course you should take with a pinch of salt and check in maybe six months down the line to see if the population is still there, but it doesn't take away from people's experience right now. The absence of any sort of directional tools and maps and dungeons also helps create this feeling of adventure and exploring the unknown, which only serves to prompt people to interact and be a bit more social. More than that, I've had people run up to me and ask for directions in a video game, which felt wild for a second and so out of time in 2019. World PvP feels fun, and of course not without mentioning the awkward and funky class balance of Vanilla WoW, but it is fun ganking that high level warrior and winning. It is fun getting destroyed by a bunch of questing alliance players and then having to run for 10 minutes from the nearest spirit healer. It is fun to keep a little black book with the names of all the people you're going to track down once you hit max level. It is fun just to do things in a game with other people alongside you doing those things as well. So what's the takeaway from this? Drop the game you're playing and sub to Classic WoW? I mean, no, not really. I know a lot of people are going to enjoy the hell out of this game, and just the same amount of people will be disappointed in its age mechanics and game design decisions. What I was aiming to do with this whole rant, for lack of a better word, is to flesh out some of the things that make the game stand out, the things that changed over the last decade and a half and that maybe have no place in modern online gaming. Or maybe they do? I don't think you need to like or fanboy over the game to appreciate that it was well made. And that's what Classic WoW is to me. If anything else, it's just a really fucking well-made game. This has been Accept. Thank you very much for your time.